Welcome back to the dog days of December, your annual stretch of terrible Portland Trailblazers basketball. This edition of the dog days of December is brought to you by everybody except for Christian James McCollum. Want to see one NBA player try and score half his team's points? Look no further than your Portland Trail Blazers. They don't call him CJ McBuckets for nothing, as he was the only Blazer that could score a McBucket. McBucket rhymes with McNugget, but yesterday Blazer fans starved as their team didn't even get close to 100 points. I for one think the Portland Trail Blazers should give away 6 free chicken McNuggets when the team fails to reach 100. I mean, at least that would make the loss a little bit sweeter and more soury. And with the Portland Trailblazers struggling as much as they are right now, I, Tory Jones, have to come up with different ways to keep you entertained and to keep you tuning back in to True Blazer Fan. <laughs> so what's going on? This is Tory back with another game recap. We're recapping that Memphis Grizzlies debacle, which was probably the worst played game of the season for the Portland Trailblazers. Even worse than when they lost to the Milwaukee Bucks by 43 points, because if the Memphis Grizzlies even shot a decent percentage, we would have lost by 30. And this is the Memphis Grizzlies. They're not the Milwaukee Bucks. It goes back to all the things that I've been saying. I am a broken record. No ball movement. We are 28th in the league in assists. And Stotts talked about how lack of ball movement and not enough assists were a problem last season. He talked about how he was trying to get creative, trying to add some wrinkles. At least that was the talk around him. What has that brought us? Well, we improved two spots to 28th. We're ahead of the New York Knicks and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Same old story where you got a bunch of off-ball players standing around. You got a bunch of sets that are only designed to get CJ and Dame a bucket or the ball. I mean, we don't have sets for Yusuf. The only sets you could say we have for Yusuf Nurkic is where we run a handoff or something that goes into a pick and roll where Yusuf Nurkic is an option as a rolling big man. We don't have sets to get guys slashing towards the rim on a cut that might be open where they can get the ball. Even though we have guys that would be solid at that. Maurice Harkless, Jake Lehman, even Al Farouk Aminu, he's improved his finishing a lot this season. But Aminu is really only getting to the rim if he's going one-on-one, -on -one, which his dribble is the most improved skill of any Portland trailblazer this season so he's actually able to do that a little bit now but think about that the only way al farouk aminu gets a layup is if he goes one-on-one -on -one. our offense doesn't produce layups our offense doesn't produce any action towards the rim i logged 15 plays yesterday in a row and i tweeted them out at true blazer fan which is our twitter channel the only action towards the rim was one-on-one -on -one plays it was Dame or CJ driving against a defender, or it was Yusuf Nurkic catching the ball at the high post and then going one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I like having a platform because I feel like I might be able to help people see the things that I see. I think blaming Neil Olshay is the easy thing to do because his mistakes are so glaringly obvious. Terry Stotts, on the other hand, you really have to sit down and watch the game and focus on player movement, focus on the sets, focus on stuff outside of the ball to really start to notice just how flawed our style of basketball is. There's really not much more to talk about with this because, I mean, I've been saying this same thing game after game let me know down in the comment section below if i've changed your mind about stots as a head coach i just think it'd be pretty cool if i you know had a little bit of influence with this platform and it's sad because i wish i could be talking about the things we're doing well i wish we could be talking about dame and dame time and him hitting a clutch game winner i wish we could be talking about other things but right now it's the same repetitive basketball from the portland trailblazers so i'm the same broken record talking about the same things in a video that it's probably hard to get you to click on because we're losing. It's almost like you just kind of want to separate yourself from the Portland Trailblazers for a little while until they get things right again. Because it's very frustrating because this is what? Four Decembers in a row where we've played absolutely terrible? And after that 10 and 3 start, I thought, okay, maybe they fixed that this year. They did not. They reverted back to the same style of basketball. They lost all their improvements that they made in terms of the way they play, in terms of ball movement, in terms of player movement, in terms of wrinkles in their basic sets like horns. And now, I mean, what do I say? 
There is something new, an interesting stat that was posted on an ESPN article by Zach Lowe. Yusuf Nurkic has 19 post-up possessions against guards this season. On those 19 post-up possessions, he's getting 0.46 points per 100 possessions. He has nine points in those 19 possessions against guards. He has six turnovers. That's absolutely terrible. But what's more terrible than that was Yusuf Nurkic going one for 15 against the Memphis Grizzlies. A big should never shoot that poorly. Even a guard that shoots a lot of tough shots should never shoot that poorly. Dame will have games where he's 3 for 14, he has to force a lot of tough shots, and usually he makes a lot of them, but if he's not on those tough shots, they become inefficient, and he'll have bad shooting nights. But Yusuf Nurkic, you're shooting most of your shots around the rim. Or at least you should be, because against the Memphis Grizzlies, Yusuf shot, what, four mid-range jumpers and a three in transition? Maybe the three wasn't in transition, but he was shooting way too many perimeter shots. I saw a tweet that said that Terry Stotts was kind of chewing out Yusuf Nurkic when he brought him to the bench after Yusuf shot that three. But even his interior shots, go strong, Yusuf. This is something you've kind of improved on this season, although he hasn't improved as much as I thought. He's shooting 58% in the restricted area, which is in the bottom 20% for a big man. Yusuf still has a long ways to go but he's had a decent season so far this year, so, and given how young he is, hopefully he can make these strides, but that Memphis Grizzlies game was quite possibly the worst game in Yusuf Nurkic's career. CJ played great. If CJ just had an average game, we might have struggled to score 60 points. That's how bad our offense was. Coming up next in the dog days of September, the Portland Trailblazers will face the Toronto Raptors, the best team in the league that just got done whooping the Golden State Warriors in Oakland without their best player, Kawhi Leonard. You thought it was gonna get better soon? Well, it's probably not going to start tonight. But if the Blazers were miraculously able to pull off a win, it would probably be a huge boost to their confidence that they need, and hopefully it could be a turning point. Maybe Toronto overlooks us, seeing how bad we've been struggling, and given the fact that they just got done playing against the Golden State Warriors. But I doubt it, because this is a team we've always struggled to play against. Last year, they blew us out on our home court. I just hope that this game is at least somewhat close, so I can get a little bit of entertainment. And that's the thing with the Portland Trailblazers, you never know. If Dame and CJ get hot together, then we have a chance. That's about as encouraging as I can be right now. So anyway, True Blazer fans, I hope I maybe cheered you up or entertained you or something. Like I've said in previous videos, we just need to be 500 coming out of December because our schedule gets much, much easier. Other than Phoenix, I believe we have no games played against the bottom five teams in the league. Cleveland, Chicago, Atlanta, Brooklyn, those are a lot of Eastern teams that are really bad, but we haven't gotten the luxury of getting easy wins against teams like that. But right now, who knows if we'd even beat those type of teams. Anyway, that's all I got for now, True Blazer fans. I hope you have a great weekend. Go Blazers!